Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I have a really great luxury handbag in-depth review for you guys today. And today I'm going to be reviewing and showing you what fits inside my beautiful YSL handbag. So you want to hear all about this handbag and my thoughts on it, definitely keep on watching. For those of you who might be new, thanks so much for checking this out. I'm a full-time working mom. In my spare time, I love making videos on fashion beauty, mommy lifestyle, luxury, and also reselling. So if those kind of things sounded all fun and interesting to you, definitely check out my other videos and please also consider hitting that subscribe button too. Okay guys, so I'm going to do another handbag review for you guys today. I really enjoy putting out these in-depth reviews because I know when I'm looking to buy a new luxury purchase, I watch basically all of the YouTube videos on that item out there to really get a sense as to what people think about the item, if it works for them, you know, what fits inside, if it's a handbag and whatnot. So I hope this video is helpful to you as well if you're considering purchasing this particular beautiful handbag. So I'm going to take you through a little bit about how I acquired this bag, what I liked about it initially. I'm going to take you through um, an idea of how the wear and tear has been for me. I'm also going to share with you guys generally what fits inside, kind of what are the largest items that I can get in this bag. Of course, I'm going to share with you some mod shots and let you know how I like to wear this bag. And at the end, I will of course end up with whether or not I think this is a worthwhile purchase. So hopefully this is going to be helpful for you. This is going to be pretty in-depth as well. So I hope with this level of detail, you can really get a good sense as to whether this will work out for your lifestyle. So I'm going to start off with telling you just a little bit about the bag itself. So this is a beautiful YSL or Yves Saint Laurent Matte Lassé Lulu Satchel. This is in the size medium and it's in beautiful black calfskin leather. So one of my most favorite features of this bag, as you can see here, is the gorgeous tonal or monochromatic black hardware as well. So I thought this was a really, really unique look, especially with the black hardware. So this bag comes in different sizes, of course, but this is the medium, which I think works best for my lifestyle. It's kind of the perfect size for me, not too big and also not too small. So the medium seems to work out really well. I did share with you guys an unboxing of this bag now two years ago, or just shy of two years ago on this channel. I will link that unboxing down below. So you will see that I picked this up pre-loved and I got this from Fashion File. So in my opinion, you are able to score pretty decent deals on designer luxury items on the pre-loved market. The issue is that certain designers, and these are just my opinions, but <laughs> Louis Vuitton, Chanel, and Hermes seem to hold their resale value quite a bit. Such that in general, I can't find screaming deals in the preload market from those fashion houses, so I tend to just purchase those items new from the boutiques. But when it comes to designer luxury houses such as Celine, Chloe, YSL, I think they don't hold their resale value quite as much, so I prefer to buy items from these fashion houses in the preload market. So that's where I got this from, from Fashion File. So if you shopped on Fashion File before, you'll know that each handbag gets a rating in terms of the condition. They start off with brand new with tags, they go to excellent, very good, and so on. So this bag was actually rated only as very good. And as you'll see in my close-ups of my wear and tear, I thought that was selling it short quite a bit. I personally think this is at least excellent quality. There's very few signs of wear back then when I first purchased it, and even right now as you'll see. However, Fashion File listed this condition as very good. So I purchased this pre-loved and I was very happy with the deal I got. I definitely paid less than retail for a condition of a bag that was excellent in my opinion. So as you'll see in that unboxing video, I posted it just shy of two years ago from now. So I've had this for almost two years. I honestly have not used it into the ground or a whole lot just because as you know, I have a lot of handbags I rotate through. But I have gotten decent wear out of it, and most importantly, in the seasons we're in now, is really when I love using these bags. When the weather is still on the chillier side, I think this kind of bag is perfect for the cooler months because it's black. In the summer or warmer months, I tend to gravitate more toward lighter color or tone of handbags. But this is perfect for this time of year, and I've just been wearing this a lot and really, really enjoying it. So I thought it was a perfect time to share with you guys this type of review. In terms of the size of this bag, again, this is the medium size. It measures 12 and a half inches by length. It measures eight and a half inches in height. 
and it measures four and a half inches in depth. So a pretty decent sized handbag. In terms of the strap drops, if you measure it when you're holding it with a two shoulder straps like this, it measures 10 and 3 4 inches in terms of the shoulder strap. And when you hold it with just one strap, like this, the strap drop measures 19 and 3 4 of an inch. So pretty good lengths and gives you a lot of versatility. Okay, so now I'm going to show you some up-close pictures and kind of share with you a little bit of my thoughts on the wear and tear and a little bit of a closer look at this beautiful handbag. So again, this is the matte lace design, which is this beautiful kind of quilted leather. And it is a little bit puffy. They make a lot of these Lulu bags with a lot of puffiness. This is just kind of, I would say, a little puffy, but not overly so. So as you can see, one of the main signs of wear on this handbag are the creases in the leather. Though I'm not really sure that's signs of wear. This may just be the natural wrinkling and graining of the leather, but there are some creases as you can see there. The hardware itself, as you can tell, is that gorgeous black. And I don't see any significant scratches. I think there are a few on there, but nothing really significant. Here's the side of the bag. Again, excellent condition. There really isn't even any significant corner wear, which is pretty amazing for this type of leather. Here's the back. So again, a few little wrinkles, but I think that's just normal for this kind of leather. And again, no significant corner wear. The sides are in excellent condition. The straps as well have held up super nicely. So I was really worried that there might be some chipping given this beautiful black tone, but there really is not any chipping or wear on the metal itself. There are these two leather pieces and they are embossed with the branding. As you can see, the leather is held up really nicely on the stitching, there is a little bit of fraying. It's going to be hard for you to tell, I think. But there's just a touch of fraying on the stitches and the handle. But again, I don't even think that's a flaw. I think that that is normally what happens with stitching. But there's a little bit of fraying. There are also at the top four grommets that hold the straps. And they are each embossed as well with branding and have also held up quite nicely. So this bag has a very strong magnetic closure, as you can see here. It's very strong. So this is a little bit of a drawback for me sometimes. When I want to get into my bag quickly, I have to pull pretty hard to get this up and I worry that I may wear um, the closure a little bit. But, as you can see, it's pretty tight, so I try to hold down the other side too, so I'm not pulling too much on the leather. But so far it's held up pretty well. See, there's no real significant stretching where the snap is, but that's one concern of mine, is how strong it is. I really have to pull to get it open. But the hardware is intact. So let me show you the inside of the bag. As you can see, there is a triple entry type of layout. It has the fabric lining on the inside, but the bag is really cuffed in this beautiful leather. It has a big pocket here. It has the zippered pocket here, which is pretty large. I will say the zipper isn't the smoothest. It's not as smooth as some of my other handbags, but it is definitely functional. And of course, everything is branded as well. So it says YSL. And there's a big back entry slip pocket in addition to a zipper pocket in the back that has a little leather pull tab and there is a little leather brand tag here and in case you're curious if you're looking for where the bag is made or the serial number it's in the back inside pocket in the lining there is a little leather tab that is sewn in here as you can probably see, there's a serial tag 
and it's made in Italy. I believe all these bags are made in Italy, but I may be incorrect about that. This one at least is made in Italy. And that's just on the inside interior pocket if you're looking for it. As you can see, or not see because it's a black interior, there's really no significant wear. Um, I don't do anything in terms of protecting the inside of this bag um, because it's really well organized. I don't um, really need to do much in terms of organization. I don't use any type of bag inserts or liners or anything. I just kind of throw my stuff in there. And I feel comfortable doing that, especially because it's a dark color interior. In terms of how the straps are attached, they're just attached to a D-ring on the side. And this ring, of course, even though it gets a lot of abuse, obviously with the straps coming and going and rubbing against it, really seems to have held up well. I don't see any chipping on it or any wear of the metal. There is also branding here on the back, which looks like it's in great condition too. And the only other signs of wear I would say, but again, I think that's normal, but it's this wrinkling on the flap, and I think that's just normal leather. I don't think it's anything in terms of a flaw. And as you can see in the bottom, surprisingly, there's really no wear. There's no feet on the bottom of this, so I was a little worried about that. But this seems to really hold up well. Granted, I don't really throw around this bag. I mean, I don't just throw it on the ground. I always have it hanging on my chair if I'm eating or sitting somewhere or putting on a seat next to me. So I don't really throw this part on the ground at all, but I'm surprised, honestly, how well it is held up, though. So as you can see, the wear and tear on this bag is excellent. When I purchased it about two years ago, it was already pre-loved and marked just in very good condition. <laughs> I don't get that, but that's fine, I'll take it. Um, hopefully that meant I got a little bit of a better deal on it. After two years of wear, granted, I would say just mild to moderate wear overall though, um, but still wear. Really, I don't know what you guys think, but I think it's pretty much in excellent condition as well. I don't see any significant signs of wear, and I really just love, love carrying this bag, and I take it a lot of places, and it's held up super well for me. So I'm just gonna quickly um, share with you guys what fits inside in terms of sizing, and then I'm gonna finish up with some mod shots. So everyone always asks for any kind of luxury handbag, what types of items in terms of size fits inside, so you can figure out if it works for your lifestyle. So let me just share with you guys that this bag holds a ton of stuff. It's considered the medium size. Um, they have larger sizes as well, in addition to smaller sizes. The larger ones for me would be too large. And with this kind of style of bag, I think it would have a lot of sagging. This already does sag some when you have items in it. But if it's a larger size, that's probably going to even be the case more so. Um, the smaller one as well is super cute and I think would be functional for me, but not as an every day-to-day -day bag. So this is the perfect day-to-day -day bag size for me, and it holds all of my essentials and then some. So I'm not going to take you through you know, all the items I put in here, because some of them are just obvious, like keys, phone, wallet. That's clearly going to fit inside no problem. It has a lot of space for secure items too because of the two zipper pockets on the interior. The one item that recently I've been really wondering would fit inside all these bags is my new agenda. So I've talked about this a lot, obviously. I will link some videos down below about this, but I have moved into this beautiful Louis Vuitton agenda. It's the large ring um, size or the GM size. So this is my life. I have everything I need in this, including all my life plans. So I like to know at least which bags will hold it and which won't. Don't get me wrong, I don't carry this thing everywhere, but I do carry it to work every day. So if I potentially want to carry a bag like this as my purse to work, this has to fit inside. I also do carry it to appointments because, you know, if I go to the doctor or dentist, I want to have my calendar open when I make my next appointment. So I do try to bring this with me, you know, during those occasions. If I'm just out for casual, you know, dinners or meals or seeing friends just on the weekends, I don't bring this along and I tend to pick more of a smaller type of handbag. Just so you're aware though, this Louis Vuitton GM Agenda does fit in this bag, which is amazing to me. It will fit in either of the pockets, but I think maybe the easiest place to access is the front large pocket because you can just slip it in here and it fits. 
So you can put it in either direction if you like. I tend to try to put the fatter side with the rings down first because then I think the bag closes a little easier. Um, but it fits just perfectly. So look at that, the GM agenda. You still have a ton of space here for your personal items and the zippered pockets are still empty as well. But the agenda fits perfectly and it's not too tight of a fit. I think there's enough space on the side such that um, I think this works really. I haven't carried the agenda around much in this bag yet because I haven't been taking this bag to work. But, um, you know, I think I will consider it. I think it's just a perfect fit. So it closes easily, as you heard. It doesn't stretch the bag out, in my opinion. And, I mean, it just fits so well. So that's just a little bit of a size reference for you in terms of what fits. The Louis Vuitton GM Agenda is probably the largest size of item that I think you comfortably can fit lengthwise into this bag, but that's pretty good for me. So I think this would make a great work bag for that reason if you're looking for kind of a nice purse to take to work. Um, yeah, it fits comfortably and super easy to get in and out of. In case you're curious, this bag, when it's empty, does weigh in at about 2.2 pounds. So in my opinion, that's not super heavy, such that even if you fill it up with the agenda and your other items, I mean, honestly, this is not too heavy to carry, especially since it's a shoulder bag and not a crook of the arm bag. This will be quite comfortable if you're lugging around your stuff, given that it doesn't start off too heavy anyway to begin with. Okay guys, so I changed the camera angle a little bit, I zoomed out a bit <laughs> to share with you guys a couple of mod shots. I want to let you know my most favorite way of carrying this bag and also some other alternatives because this truly is a versatile option for you. So the most common way I carry this is probably the most classic traditional way and that's just with the doubled up shoulder strap over my shoulder. So I typically just carry it like this. I think it's just gorgeous this way. It has a great strap drop, so you could wear a coat under it, no problem. And it's comfortable to wear like this. It just sits over your shoulder and your elbow kind of just clutches it close to your body. So I think this is a great look, super easy to throw over your shoulder. I'm about 5'4 in height in case you're curious for a frame of reference. And as you saw in the up closer view, there are two leather straps here. So it makes it super comfortable to wear over your shoulder. Some chain strap bags that you can double up to wear over your shoulder only have one leather piece, which tells me that it really wasn't meant to be a shoulder bag necessarily. Um, so if there's only one leather piece and then one chain piece on your shoulder, that gets a little uncomfortable. But this is meant to wear over your shoulder because there are two shoulder strap kind of protectors. So super comfortable, my most favorite way to wear this bag, hands down. All right, so the next way to wear it is to just do a single shoulder. So you just pull it up and again, this strap length now or drop is about 19 and three quarters inches. So you could do a long shoulder carry like this. So I don't usually wear the bag with this long shoulder strap, but now and again, I do see people wearing bags like this as a long shoulder. And I think it's just a chic look, honestly, with the right outfit. So this is super fun too. It's just slung over with one chain like this as a long shoulder bag. The second most common way I wear it though, of course, is crossbody. As you all know, if you watch my channel, I have four little kids. So I definitely like to be hands-free and it's great just to pop this over your shoulder like this. And it hits me just at the top of my hip bone, which to me is a slightly high crossbody, but that's usually where I like it to hit. So I think it looks great as a crossbody. It's a little bit high. So if you're not petite, this may be a little too high for crossbody wear. But for me, I think this works. It's not too high in my opinion. It sits close to the body and it's very, very functional in this way. It's so easy to convert from shoulder to crossbody too. I think some bags that are convertible take a little bit more fussing to get to the crossbody style. But this one is just, you know, quickly pull up the other strap, put it over your body. So really easy, simple. I just love the versatility of this bag. So the final way that I think is really chic to wear this bag, which I don't typically do, but I may be doing more in the future, is as an oversized clutch. So I think this look is very hot right now. Just the look of carrying a really big bag as a clutch. So you can either put the um, straps in the bag if you want more of a sleek look, 
But what I like is just letting the straps dangle over my hand. I think it's a little more security that way, but also I mean, one of the main reasons why I love this bag, like I mentioned, is the chain detail. So I love just showing that off and just grabbing it like a clutch like this, I think would be really chic and still looks really appropriate, especially if you're going out somewhere for dinner or something. I think this is a great look, super fun, a little bit more edgy. So I don't know. I really like the look of oversized clutch bags too. And I think this kind of fits the bill a little bit. Okay, so finally I want to finish up with my final thoughts on the bag and is it a worthwhile purchase in my opinion? So overall, I'm very happy with this bag. I think it has a similar look to some of my other bags. For instance, my Gucci Mormont in the matte lace I have in the nude color looks similar in terms of the quilting style. Um, and this also does, of course, channel a little bit of a Chanel vibe. Clearly it looks different. But I think it's more of an understated Chanel look, meaning especially in the black, on black, it's really understated. I've also seen, for instance, more contemporary designers such as Rebecca Minkoff do similar styles of bags with this kind of puffy quilting as well. So I think it has a similar look to a lot of my favorite other styles of bags. When you compare price points though, for this bag versus the Chanel, and as we all know, Chanel has just skyrocketed their prices recently. When you compare a Chanel quilted leather bag to this bag, I mean, it's not even comparable, right? The price point for this is a lot more attainable for people. I think you get a very similar look to that as well, where you get a beautiful full leather black quilted bag with chain detail and hardware that you pay really a fraction of the price for. So I think for value, at least, this is amazing. In and of itself, this is a great designer handbag. I don't mean to compare it to Chanel because YSL is its own fashion house and YSL is still, I think in my opinion, very, very trendy and they put out great styles. I first wasn't sure about this logo, but I really, really do love it. I think it's beautiful and especially in this black on black, again, it's quite subtle. I think it's just striking and I have no other black hardware handbags in my collection right now. so. This is perfect for me, um, so I like the look of it for so many reasons. So another great feature of this bag, of course, is the wear and tear. So as I showed you guys, even though I've owned this pre-loved handbag for over two years, I should say almost two years now, there's no significant wear and tear on this bag in my opinion. So despite the fact that it's beautiful calfskin leather, it holds up really well, it doesn't scratch. So I think this is a super, super durable version of this Lulu satchel. And then the final piece that I just love about this bag is the versatility. So I showed you guys, not only can you carry it so many different ways very easily, but also it holds a ton. It holds my GM agenda, all my necessities. It's a great work bag. I think it looks great on the weekends in casual attire too. And you can also dress it up as well to go out to dinner, especially in this black on black. So this bag really you can take from day to night. And at least in my collection, I have very few handbags that can transition so well. So this is one of the best features I would say about this particular handbag. All right, so obviously I would definitely purchase this bag again. I think there are a few downsides. If anything, I think the downside, although it might be a pro, but the downside is how strong this magnet is, as I mentioned earlier, because when I'm trying to get my items out, it's really hard to open sometimes. You have to pull a little bit, and I do worry that I'm gonna stretch the leather around the attachment. Um, section so I have to be a little cautious when I open this bag to kind of gently open it up that's my only slight con although I say that's a con it might be a pro because it's very secure I would say so I'm not too angry about that um, another feature that might be a little bit uh, better in some of my bags is the smoothness of the zipper I do think the middle zipper does stick a little bit when I open mine so that's another slight con but really beyond those cons, I don't have any others. I just really only have pros about this bag. So absolutely, I would purchase it again. I would purchase it again on the pre-love market, no question, because I paid definitely less than retail for this bag for a bag that in my opinion looks essentially brand new. So for these YSL bags, definitely suggest looking in the pre-love market. I thought I got a great value for it. But yes, 
100% would purchase it again. I highly recommend you checking out this bag in case you're interested, especially also if you're interested in looking at some higher end luxury bags, such as Chanel flat bags. I think this is very similar in terms of when I carry it compared to my large vintage jumbo Chanel. So, you know, if you want to kind of get a feel for do you like this kind of a quilted leather look with a flap, um, this might be a good first bag for you to test out as well. All right, so there you have it. Those are all my thoughts in detail about this particular medium Lulu matelassé bag from YSL. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you have any questions about my experience purchasing or using this handbag, definitely comment down below. Let me know if you own this as well, what you think about it, how it's held up for you too. I'm always curious to hear from you all as well. Thanks for watching another video, and I will see you again in my next one. Bye.